Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I want to draw your attention to what some of the heliocorders are showing for uh, the Missouri area, as most of you probably know by now. And by the way, this is uh, yesterday in Penascot Bayou. There was a 4.0 uh, earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone this morning. Here's the earthquake right here. It occurred about 4 a.m. Uh, but what's a little bit concerning is there has not been any aftershocks in this area. And some of these heliocorders are starting to show activity again. Um, here's another one. There's the 4.0 at 4 a.m. So it's been almost 10 hours. And now we have some more activity that's showing up here. And let's check one more. Okay, same thing here. Uh, here's the earthquake. Then there was a couple hours of inactivity, and now the activity is picking up again. So if you look at a map of where this earthquake was located, uh, this is the New Madrid seismic zone. In fact, let's back this up. This lies on the edge of the craton, which extends pretty much through here and up into Canada. In fact, if you look at the Canadian quakes that have been going on in the last few months, uh, these do not get reported on USGS, uh, nor do they get put into the Earthquake 3D program. And the last one was centered uh, right here near Ottawa. So um, just as a review, the New Madrid seismic zone is uh, the most well-known for a series, what they call a sequence, of very large earthquakes that happened um, in 1811 and 1812. They were um, a couple weeks apart. Uh, they were approximate magnitudes of 8.2 to 8.6, so these were very large seismic events. They actually uh, rang church bells as far as Boston and toppled um, chimneys and so forth as far as New York City. Because of the, the craton and um, the, the bedrock situation, these earthquakes tend to be felt over a much wider area than uh, what earthquakes do, how they're normally felt in, in seismic zones uh, such as California. And um, the Huntington Post actually reported today that it was felt, I believe, in nine states. So anyway, I don't have that article up, but what I, of course, wanted to do right away is see where the closest nuke plant was to this event. Here's where the earthquake happened. The um, closest reactor would be the Callaway reactor. And as you can see, uh, St. Louis, which has a population of approximately 3 million in its metropolitan area uh, is exactly downwind from this plant. And uh, Browns Ferry, Arkansas Nuclear, Clinton, and Sequoia uh, are also uh, within a few hundred miles of this area. In fact, if we back this map out, and I'll put a link to this so you can go put in your city or your zip code and find out exactly what your proximity is and what you are downwind from in the event of a large seismic um, event in this area. I, you can see how many possible new plants would be affected. And the Huntington Post reported this morning that the 4.0 from this morning was uh, felt in nine states. So. Uh, we've got a lot of reactors here, and if you have been watching any of my other reports, then you know that these reactors are having a lot of problems right now, and some of the problems are being investigated uh, by the NRC. Um, I checked the NRC log to see if any uh, of these plants reported problems in association with this earthquake event today and they have not but this is voluntary um, there was one grand gulf in um, mississippi 
that on February the 19th had a scram situation where the reactor uh, went into emergency shutdown because the water level decreased and um, there's no explanation for why this water level um, went down although it is um, it is now being investigated and the reactor has been restarted so that's one to watch um, let's see potentially contaminated individual here we had another safety parameter display system became non-functional at the hatch plant in Georgia. This was on 218. So, you know, these are just under normal operating circumstances. And the, the big concern, of course, is um, what an earthquake could do to these plants. And the most dangerous plants are the boiling water reactors, like the ones that blew up in Fukushima for several reasons. Uh, Browns Ferry is near the New Madrid zone. In fact, we can just go through the list. I believe there's 23. Brunswick, um, Clinton, Columbia, Cooper, Dresden, Dwayne Arnold, Hatch, Enrico Fermi, that's near me, Grand Gulf, Hope Creek, James Fitzpatrick, LaSalle, Limerick, Monticello, Nine Mile, Oyster Creek, Peach Bottom, Perry Nuclear, Pilgrim, which just had a problem I reported on yesterday, Quad Cities, River Bend, Susquehanna, Vermont Yankee, Big Rock, Dresden, Elk River, Humboldt, La Crosse, Millstone, Pathfinders dismantled. Sorry, Humboldt Bay is also. Um, so, you know, we, we've got a lot of these um, very dangerous reactors all over the place, including in very seismically active zones. And the big problem with this type of uh, boiling water reactor is that the control rods, for one thing, come in through the bottom. So in an emergency, these rods need to be inserted and it has to be perfect or if there's any type of ground movement and these are not aligned with the holes they're supposed to go into, um, you can have a meltdown very quickly. And, and that of course is uh, significantly um, more of a possibility if there's a cooling system function um, that's disrupted or an electrical system that's been disrupted and you know we know that these things happen all the time even without earthquakes second problem is that the spent fuel is all stored on the fourth floor near the top of the reactor so that if there is some type of buildup of hydrogen and a, there's an explosive event it will scatter the rods everywhere and something that can be rather misleading about um, how close you live to a nuke plant is that these zones that they indicate, these circles, um, you know, this isn't how the air flows. The air flow is going to be going this way. So this dispersion model should actually look like this, which means if this Callaway plant had a problem, if there was some type of uh, radioactive release, the entire city of St. Louis would be affected. And uh, based on the recent problems at Byron Nuclear and at San Onofre, um, Chicago did not receive any warning uh, about outside air, even though uh, radioactive tritium was released, and neither did San Diego for the San Onofre plant. So whether or not any type of alert would uh, come out for the city of St. Louis, uh, I, I wouldn't hold my breath. So um, keep an eye on this. I'm going to put links to all of these monitors so you can uh, keep an eye on them yourself and just have a plan so that if there is uh, an earthquake in this area first of all that you have a place to meet with your family in the event of uh, you know a cell phone disruption um, that you have a, a plan or you have some water stockpiled in case the water becomes contaminated for a period of time 
and that you plan if you're um, downwind of a reactor that has a problem and if you're close enough to see it um, and you see any type of unusual smoke or steam being released you should either uh, shelter indoors uh, don't go outside, especially without some type of um, uh, respirator protection, or um, you may just want to get out of the area altogether, depending on the, the severity of the problem. And it's something that you just need to take an interest in your own self-preservation. Um, you know, this area does have a history of very large earthquakes, and the fact that we haven't had any, in fact, let me refresh this page, that we haven't had any aftershocks and uh, there is uh, some movement indicated on the heliocorders is uh, basically you know means that we just need to watch so um, I'll update you if any more information becomes available or, or any of these nuke plants in the area uh, report problems later on today be safe